<laughs> That's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis, how are you doing this lovely October evening? It's, it is now suddenly, expectedly, autumn in Kalamazoo. One day the leaves were green and it was warmish, and the next day it got real cold and rain, and the next day all the leaves turned and they started blowing down, and suddenly oh. it is the fall. No longer end of summer. We might have another couple of days predicting snow in the UP later this week. Yikes. And maybe in the southern northern Michigan or uh, southern northern Michigan. Say that. No, yeah. the northern tip of the mainland of Michigan. Uh, Where the, the index figure of the mitten is, yes. Yeah, up there. But but very pleasant. And today, just before we, before, and I'm glad you ended up rescheduling this and giving us a couple of days. I like Wednesdays, of course. Right. But that gave me time to finish my add-on to my new shed. <laughs> and today I finished putting up a tin open-air picnic-type awning that is eight feet high on one end and six and a half feet tall on the other end. And just like the shed is 12 foot long and 10 feet wide. So I've just doubled the size of it and I got it all done in two long days because there's no walls so except awning. the wall that's there. Very nice. And, and awning is the best way to describe it, but it's actually more like a tin wood shed. People would know what that means. And I, I put just finished the last screw in the roof and put on the drip edge at the edge of the tin, yeah. and it was so close to perfect that when I put up the drip edge, which is a, a really interesting thing, you put it up below your tar paper, in this case your tin, and it goes down in front of the wood that it's sitting on, and so what it does is it catches the water on the roof and edges it down mm -hmm. and keeps it on the roof instead of going off to the side, and it also protects the wood that's right beneath that area, and with roof. tin, or the metal, aluminum. Yeah. And uh, when I went it's to not really tin. It, no, it's not really tin. They call it tin. That's I call it tin. Bullshit. Everybody calls it tin. Who knew? <laughs> Everybody, everybody's been asking. They, they why, did they call it tin? And I don't know. I say I don't know. I don't you know, know what they I call it in, in, in England? Aluminium. No. Really? Aluminium. Are you making that up? No. You make you making it up? No. Aluminium. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> in America yes, we say aluminium, are. and in England oh, they say true. aluminium. In it, what do they say? Aluminium. 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 Al, al, aluminium. So that's like what Al has to pay for cover charge to get in. Right. And al, aluminium. Aluminium, yes. A la carte. Aluminium. So my, my little tool cart, I, I don't know if I told you this, but I had oh, this a tool cart that's from, from a kitchen where they were tossing it, I believe, or at Wait, least I acted like they were. Your tool cart is not what you call your golf bag. I don't ever call my golf bag a tool cart. Okay. Never have. Okay. Do you? I have not yet, but I you promise that I won't ever. You're by the question. You raise, you raise a question, you get a question back, and you... I'm imagining a little cart, that I would, like, you're, like you're pushing your a cart along, cart. That, you're, that, that you've got all your tools on, and that's pretty similar to a golf bag, I would think. You, you know? No. No, your utility belt, your tool belt is close to that you wrap around. I don't keep my golf clubs on this my belt. That would be awkward. No, and nor do you use your golf clubs to nail fucking two by fours in. Well, so I think there might be a, a little depends. bit of a, a apples and oranges thing going on here. You, you raise mean, an interesting point or two. I'm getting lost in the nuance, I must say. But anyway, and you, so here's tell me about your cart. Here's the thing: the cart is made out of aluminum, and they use it in a restaurant. Aluminum to, that they cut food on it in the prep area. And then, and, and it's got room for equipment underneath it, and it's on wheels that lock in place. When you're done slicing your food, you unlock it, and then you wheel it over to the cooker, where they, nobody has to carry a, a tray or anything like that. It reduces breakage. But anyway, I maneuvered it from a restaurant, and now it's you maneuvered what I put it from a restaurant. Tools on, maneuvered it. Okay. It found its way in the back of my truck. Let me put it that way. <laughs> it. it was next to the dumpster behind a restaurant, completely covered with grease. And in, in, in next to it were, were pallets, wooden pallets that were being, in my view, also thrown away. And so, boom, bang, bang, back on my truck, I'm out of there. And it doesn't weigh that much because it's aluminum. But it's the handiest damn thing. I'll send you a picture. You can post it, if you will. We talked about the pneumatic hammer, correct? Yes. Yes, we did. That was and the, uh, the tool of the day today. The tool of the day today is... Uh, 
Welcome to our Drill new segment, day. The Tool of the Day, <laughs> with Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, what is our Tool of the Day today? Let's talk well, about it. Well, it's interesting that you ask me. I've done some thinking about that. The Tool of the Day has got to be the concrete block platforms that you lay your post in because it has a 4 by 4 opening built into the concrete uh, block. So you, it's easy enough to move the block. Uh-huh. And when you put your 4x4 four four in there, which is like 6, 7 feet tall, which forms your, in this case, your back wall, it stands up straight. And when you use okay. shims to get it in so, it's, so that it is sturdy, you can move it. All around. And that means that when you're having difficulty with things being straight, because everything is crooked, the, the ground is crooked, the yeah. sky is crooked. I'm also I'm getting crooked. older, yes. And, and, th- and stuff gets out of kick right. because you're using wood that by the time you put it up is curved. There's curves in it, so it may be lifting or whatever. So I was ready to put the roof on, and I noticed from standing on the two-step porch that's connected to the house that it appeared to be unlevel. And for about the sixth time that day, those movable posts became handy. Because all I had to do was get my ladder, undrill the giant screws that hold, that use that post to hold up the back frame of the house, and then move the post accordingly and reduce it so that it was level. Wait. That is the tool of the day. Tool of the day, everybody. The concrete. The concrete. Concrete block. Stage. It's like... Stage. You know, some people think I'm stupid, like I'm, like I'm a block, like a blockhead or whatever. But no, I have a purpose, and I hold up the four by four. But... So, and so you can move it again and again. And then, and to finalize this... Are we still talking about the shed? It's now the, you know, it's the add-on to the shed. It's the awning that we spoke about earlier. You should look at your notes. It's one of the oh. earliest things I said. This feature creep is just like... And then next week there's going to be an, an awning to the awning. And it's just going to be... <laughs> right. Until it gets so low that it becomes a emergency sleeping quarters. Right. Tall, how about big enough for bunk beds? And you got a duck to get out of the front. Okay. There you go. Well, I'm on it. Uh, awning, yawning, you know, it's all, it's all good. It's all relative to you. One, one leads to the other. It's cause and effect, I would imagine. Speaking yeah, but... of the awning, it leads me to yawning. I wonder why he's jawing about this so long. I wish he changed the subject. I cannot follow this subject. I do not care what tool he used. I do not care. Sam, I am. If he was abused. No, no. That's not bad. Okay. Good story. Uh, <laughs> two out of five. That was a great story. <laughs> two out of five. You know, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film some stuff. I need some help. You'll be my producer. I want to do how-to videos. Sort of like the... the you the, mentioned this the, last the week. Books that you would get... And we didn't get around to it. That you would, like the uh, computers for idiots. Uh-huh. This is like building a shed for idiots, you know. This, this and, is a uh, great idea because... I'm pretty sure there are no how-to videos on YouTube no, but about anything. It's, I've seen a few. <laughs> I've seen a few. There is literally nothing, of course, you can't Google. How to hold a hammer. You know, uh, who knows? I know. I don't, I've never Googled I mean, that, but you can very find delicately. it in a minute. <laughs> firmer than a cigar. I'll tell you that right now. That's what I always say. you got to hold your hammer firmer than a cigar. I know. I can't. I say, I know I say that all the time. I say I, I, it's funny. You're right. I, you say it all the time. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, and uh, COVID uh, is still on a tear. We got uh, things are opened up to a good extent. And there's those that do and those that don't wear masks. And it spreads. And our president is out there creating super spreaders. Did you hear? You must have. That they had to talk him out of when he was standing on the balcony, that underneath his white shirt would be a Superman shirt. They heard about this. And he was literally going to open his shirt to show that he is, in fact, a Superman. He did not let QAnon down. Okay, so first of all, you've got to have some muscles to rip up a button shirt. Just the top part of it. Just the top part. Oh. I mean, maybe he, he wouldn't come out and be like shirt. unbuttoning little by little, showing a little bit of cleavage. Take off his down. mask. Unbutton two buttons, show the thing, and then turn and go into the White House. They had he had to do that twice because he must have stumbled the first time. He's a lot of people are sick. 
A lot of people are getting sick. Chris Christie's out of the hospital. He lost 30, 40 pounds. He's down to 320. So he, he's doing better. Yeah, it's... I don't know. It's another one of, one of these things where it's not too bad for the rich people. Like I thought Chris Christie, when I worked in New Jersey, I thought Chris Christie was one of the smarter politicians, and I liked what he was doing and that this that how he's how he's how he's changed is that he's become such a apologist for Trump that it well, shows an sincerity because he's much no he's a little different because he's a brilliant fucking guy he's a brilliant guy but as it turns out and I don't say this with any got to get under the skin of somebody from Jersey but yeah he he sucks up he's like he sucks he sucks up yeah but hey boss hey boss what do you want me to do next when if you have a hunger for power and you're a Republican in 2016, 2017. Yep. The only path for you is to kiss Donald's ass. Right? Like, you're not going to gain more power by holding firm to your principles. Like, no. Name, no. name one Republican and, that, that did that and we now yeah. admire. There's nobody. Uh, Mitt Romney until he, because he did vote for impeachment. And so that fills the bill of your. Criterion, I believe. Yeah, but no one was talking about him until he collapsed. I don't know. It's because the media that magnifies that side of the country would have ignored. Like, I'm sure there were Republicans that were that decided, no, I will not support this ass clown, and held firm. And the press is not talking about them because they're not interesting or they're not. <laughs> I don't know, falling in line. Well, they were also like several senators. Trump got on Trump's bad side, and they he called the, his electorate to overturn them, and some were beat, and many resigned, and said, "I'm not going to put up with this, and I'm out." And the weakening of government through the intimidation began then, which of course made everyone else who stayed say, "It's clear what my choice is." Right. At this point, the motherfucker, motherfucker is so either I kiss his ass or I get out with the people that I need including some new voters, including older voters, that, uh, huh, he'll fucking cream me. So damned if I do, damned if I don't, well, huh, I, I will. And then they thrive. And they get jobs in the administration, and they turn into chiefs of staff, and, the, you know, and on and yeah. on and on and on it goes. I don't know, man. It's maddening. It's so many 20 days before the election. The, the nominee for the Supreme Court, woman that Trump was nominated here was asked point blank whether she understood that in the Constitution it states uh, that Election Day shall be held on the first Tuesday following the first Saturday of the month. And is there any interpretation that could be otherwise than that? You know what she said? She'd say, well, if that matter was taken to me in front of the Supreme Court, I would hear both the defendant and the litigant's side of the story. We would discuss it. We would have briefs. And then we would conclude what, where the law took us. Right. And it's like, uh, so that would be a no? Yeah. These hearings, I cannot stand to watch them because they are just no, such it's, it's, uh, such a verbal yeah. uh, diarrhea. Masturbation. Oh, excuse me. Did that mean to summon my watch? Huh. I'm not sure Look I understand either, Siri. The electronics, huh? Yeah. The fuck? How many times did I tell you? Fucking Classic. Rookie. Yeah, so I have had a birthday since we have spoken. Yes, yes, you're here, do tell. I And here, let me say, uh, before you begin, that a happy Smittix birthday to you. Thank you very much. I used the opportunity to take my family to eat at a restaurant that I've been wanting to eat at in for a couple of years, and we did. And it was lovely. The main downside was the acoustics of the place. It was really hard to hear someone that was more than one person away from you on the table. Like, there are places... Because it was in a cavern, it was it, in a large building. I don't know the exact parameters that, of what makes a place like that shitty, because I've been in places that are tiny little places that it reverberates everything and you can't hear anybody. But this was this was a bigger place, but it, it had that particular problem. It was a nice meal with family, but family that you could see, but not hear, which... There are yeah. person comes there. <laughs> but sometimes that's I mean it's better than worse than other times. But yeah. It sounds fascinating. Now this is the first time you've gone out to eat since March. 
pot the first time in an indoor place yes we've been out to a place where you could sit outside right before right but yes in an indoor place yes you wear masks until you sit down and then the waitress was wearing a mask and again because of the acoustics it was hard to understand her telling us what was not on the what was on the menu that they didn't have anymore or whatever or what the specials were but it was good great food and generally a happy day i had a so in spain you typically have two courses at a restaurant three if you count the yeah three normally you can choose from a selection of things for your first course and then a selection of things for your second course and then a selection of desserts and my first course was a salad with with seared goat cheese on top which is quite nice yeah and my (laughs) (laughs) as the the goat would say (laughs) yes and my second course was that sounds bad my second course was that sounds bad that would be sheep yes second course second course was uh a pig leg basically it all the way down to the hoof it was just this little thing that was on my plate with some with some french fries and it was <laughs> it was uh roasted wait in the oven wait, such that the, the skin was all nice and uh was all nice and crispy skin. and you uh, picked it apart what yep. did you do with the hooves did you take them home and make jewelry out make jewelry out of them when i wasn't supposed to eat those huh. <laughs> it'd be good for you well, you can make a lot of jello out of those soups. It's the, one of the primary ingredients in jello. Exactly. So you'd be, hey, 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 there's money to be made. You call it off pigs. In right? Spain, we, you in know, Spain, we, manage them I up. say. Hopefully they'll be all right. In Spain, as they say, we use every part of the pig. There's a delicacy yeah. in Spain that is pig feet, where yes. it's super gelatinous, but... Uh, P- pickled. No, not pickled. Pickled. No, you, you, oh, well, you can that's pickle. A, that's... You might pickle. That's a. Uh, that's a. Uh, but you'd be fickle. Huh. Eh, you know, take it or leave it. Yes. Fickled figs feet. No. Yeah, it, that was lovely. And then for dessert. How much meat is in it? When you, I would imagine, once you get above the hoof and the first knuckle, that you've got basically a leg of meat that must be five six inches long. All right. Now I have to send you an actual photo. Feet. Oh, right now to see it. Because I took a All picture. Right. Okay. It looks a little bit like a like a weird dragon penis or something, but yeah, get your uh, how would you know about that? Let me tell you. Let me tell you about Puff. Is there a story? Is there a story there? Did you post the picture? It's there on it its way. Oh my god! What the fuck, man? It I'm telling like you, a, it's a dragon penis. But yes, it looks like a it looks like a goddamn embryo of a bird. Where's the which end is the hoof, bro? Is it the small end is where the yes. hoof is? Yes. And so that's the fr- – it's huge, isn't it? No. I mean, those are regular sort of yeah. size French fries. Oh, I thought maybe they were real tiny. You thought they were like or, I don't pool know. floats or something? Uh, it looks like something from fucking aliens, man. It would yeah. Fucking pop out of your chest. Here's my first course. Jeez. Here's your first course. Oh, now that looks – That looks yummy. Delightful. Are those anchovies? They are. Yes. And not only that, the anchovies, underneath the anchovies was hidden some some caramelized onions, which was oh my a God. delightful treat. This looks like a delicacy. Exactly. Man, so, I'm all in on that. Yeah. Nice. So, they tried the goat cheese and butter. I can see that. They, I love it. Don't you be we, trying uh, we my goat out, cheese. Yeah. We went out As for, I always uh, say. We, we went out for pizza. <laughs> that just chars my goat cheese. Yeah. I see all the, now that I'm on this damn chat, I see the cartoons and oh, shit the that chat. were posted. I got to get out of it. They're too funny. They're too funny. Where are you? There you are. That just charged my goat cheese. Where'd you go? Shit. You got lost, bro. And towards the end of the meal, when we were waiting for our desserts to be delivered, the restaurant did this thing where here we are, where you can barely hear anything. And then like some music starts playing and I'm like, being an old fuddy duddy, I'm like, Fuck, I can't even hear anything. Another playing music. But it turns out it's some sort of a happy birthday song. And they come over to me with a sparkling dessert thing and they present it to me and light up a candle and, and say. And they sang happy birthday in Spanish? What's no, your... the thing was being played over. Some sort of happy birthday thing was being played. But what it did was it made everyone look up from their what they were doing and, and shut the fuck up and look at me. 
and to which I raised my hands as a showman would and was like, which is gracias, which is gracias. And I blew out my candle and I made a wish. And that, what's your wish, man? Well, we got to wait for November. Just saying. <laughs> oh, no. You want the third party candidate to win. So Trump is trying to win back some of the older vote. We went to Florida the other day and, and I had a crowd, mostly older people, frankly, as Florida would be, and some with masks. The ones behind the camera showed. Yeah, yes. Can you Question. close your door? So we don't hear your spring. Yeah, I do hear a little bit of noise. Let's and your offspring? My, pro- my progeny. Your progeny, yes. Progeny. I hate them. Whoa. Knocked my whole desk over. Oh, right there. I forgot my chair was lowered. Fucking kill myself. Anyway, what well, was so I saying? You, you were going to get up and do something, but then you fell back. Again. No, I closed the door. Not the door I can see. Close the... Oh, that's not where the people are. The people are in the door you can't see. Okay, well. They're upstairs. Isn't that always the truth, man? The people are in the door you can't see. It's right. like, right. It's like, what? Right. Yeah. One one door closes, another door opens. Stamp car. <laughs> that's so good. I love that one. So anyway, I got a little bit of applause, and it was a lovely day. And then we went out for a walk, and it was good. Sounds like a great time in eating the deep fried alien. So how much meat would you pluck out of that thing? Enough to make a big sandwich if you were making a sandwich to give me a, an idea of the size? Or is it more, no, it's it's a small meal. It's a uh, lot of meat. Okay, so. Were you, were you happy with the quantity? I did not finish all the meat. Oh. And then. Why is that? My, because it, it was lovely, but it was too much. It was too much. Yeah, it, and if I hadn't had the salad beforehand, I would have finished it easily, but I was not empty. And, and then for my dessert course, I chose a selection of flans. Oh. And there were three different flans, and I was able to try each one of them, but was unable to finish any of them because you were too it was just too rich. Yeah. Too rich. Too rich. Uh, flan, flan, flan. The poor man's custard, of course. Easier to cook, quicker, cheaper to serve. But, you know, a blue collar kind of uh, custard is remarkable, I suppose. I always say, a man, a flan, flanama. What? So, what did you say? Yeah. To whatever you said is unintelligible. <laughs> Try it again, a little slower. <laughs> what you will always say is another thing that you never say, that you always say. That you always say it. So what is this thing that you never say that you want to convince us that you always say? You probably forgot by now. If I always say that I never say it. Wait, no. Yeah. So. What do you say about flan? I say a man, flan, a flannel, Panama. No, flanama. Fuck Oh my God, that was worth waiting for. What? Well, you're the one that built it up. What? No. what do you mean built? Wait, you're like everyone, shut up. up. We're gonna hear this so one. You, this one so thing that you have to do anything than under deliver. It's not my <laughs> fault. It's not my fault. Good try. Two out of five. Okay. Give you two out of five for that. <laughs> yes, that was a. So we've got we had some we got some rain coming later. Right now we have a pretty blue sky and very high white clouds, a little breeze. The leaves are all sorts of colors and starting to gather. And it's it's been a good it's been a very good day today. And thank you for your help earlier. Or was it late last week on the technical issues? It went very well today. We well ended up with all thumbs up. Eleven out nine out of eleven people showed them. Excellent. So that was good. And here we are, man. I am going to have to get ready for winter. It is around the corner. It is predicted to be a rough one. Fuck. Yeah. The hurricanes have run out of letters. So the the snowstorms. Well, winter is this is the polar vortex is already forming up what's uh, to be uh, come quite the winter season here. So. We're, we're going to, I got to button things up. Got to take down the tents before they collapse under the snow. Button of things up. The shed and the awning. So that. you button up your shirt and you batten down the hatches. Is that true? Yes. In the case of Trump, you unbutton your shirt 
and you close all the hatches. How do you spell batten? Batten, B-A-T-T-E-N, batten the hatches. Batten, to grow fat, to feed gluttonously. Okay. Batten can be a noun, meaning a strip, bar, a strip, comma, batten bar. Batten down the hatches. It's not a... It's not a no, I don't think it's. I don't think Burp. it's. B a t t o n. No. No. Nah, batten. B a t t e n. Yeah. B a t t e n. A Man. baton of the hatches. Batten down the hatches to prepare for difficult or dangerous situation. Okay. Good. Is but. It, it, I saw. B a t e n. Yes. But it's only. There we go. Give me it, a gold star. It's only for that down the hatches thing. Otherwise, this, otherwise it means to, to glow fat, to grow fat, or to feed gluttonously, like our president. Or also like our president, to grow prosperous, especially at the expense of another. Oh, huh. you think he'd do that? I understand that we have this financial system that is built on debt, and that money is debt. <laughs> And that when you – we have this idea as school children or whatever that when you go to the bank and you ask for a loan, they are giving you money that is – someone else's money that they have deposited in the bank. And that is like – that money is like an object that people have put, have put money in the bank, these particles in the bank. And that if the bank – and if you ask the bank for a loan, they give you some of the money that other people have given in with the idea that when you pay it back, there's going to be more of it, et cetera. But turns out when you ask for a loan, the bank just like conjures money out of nothing. And uh, the fact that you now owe the bank means that mon more money exists than before. And that was mind blowing when I learned that uh, 10 years ago or whatever. But the idea that you could have someone with so few scruples that could totally game that system of being like, oh, all I need to have money is to ask a bank for it, and then they will fabricate it out of thin air, and now I have money. Right. Is like it's pass so the debt. pass the debt up. It, it's pass so genius. Pass the debt up. It, it's such a it's such a genius hack yes. of the system. The system was set up with the assumption that people had ethics <laughs> and would pay back anything, but once someone once a single person came along and decided, oh no, I'm just going to ask for money, and not pay it back. That broke the whole system. It, it shattered it into a thousand pieces because it turns out you can do that. And yeah. to someone with my sensibility who abhors debt and I don't want to owe anyone anything, that is my worst uh, you know, nightmare of, I, oh man, I borrowed $5 from somebody. Shit, as soon as I can, I'm going to try and give it back because I don't want to, I don't want to owe anyone anything. To someone like me, this idea that, oh, you can just ask for stuff and then – not care and just get it is and just get it is like it's so like it it twists my moral sensibility to the breaking point but also i'm able to intellectually appreciate what a genius fucking move that is to to see the weak spot in the system and, and be like oh yeah like i see that we could just make money out of nothing and i don't have to do anything and it could just be mine and then i can have whatever the hell i want oh well, let me just do that and if it hurts, yeah. and if it hurts anyone, then it's the it's the system. Imagine the on that point, that the president has due bills, within the next three or four years, it's reported, four hundred and twenty million dollars. And is he not the single best example of what you're talking about? Oh, I was talking about him. Yeah, you were. Yeah, I mean, it, I already know the, it was the, sub, the subtext. Discourse. Oh, it is general discourse. But what, I heard someone point out that that he's not even cool enough to. Pay down one million on his four hundred twenty million debt, so that it's down to four twenty, which would be like cool, bro. <laughs> we say that, oh yeah, but then it's due. But so far, that has not yeah, meant anything, yeah. and, and nor will it. Like the whole fact is that so, so the, it's so ironic that the naked emperor is the one pointing out that the system is naked. So it's the, like his claim to drain the swamp. <laughs> no, but but it's like he. he has been able he sees that there are no consequences and is showing us that and there are no consequences like he he will he will not 
face any consequences for anything ever. And you don't he, believe he knows so? that. No, I believe he'll end up in prison. Okay. I believe My, he'll end up if he's not dead. Yep. Uh, in the last episode, I, predi- I predicted he would die he this did. week. But I I now see that is not happening. We still got a week left, bro. <laughs> you don't have to cash in your chips yet. Just check. It's, uh, but no, but I really don't think I. The way I see the system, I he, he, there will be no consequences for him, and he has that. That is the life he has lived, and he will continue to live such a life. Oh, I don't believe that. I believe that we've and and I offer as you would like to not. I, I would like to not believe that, but anyway, it's just this that we have a history in this country of seeing uh, highfalutin politicians do prison time. We've never seen a president. But we've had pardons and we've had all sorts of things. Now, my scenario is a little bit more likely than yours, a predicted death. My scenario is that on January 15th, Trump actually resigns. Mike Pence actually is president and resolves him of yeah. all criminal activity, which Absolutely. will uh, be tested in the courts for over the next five years to the Supreme Court, which very likely by then, of course, will be a majority with Amy, what the fuck? Amy Coney Barrett, it may be the name, with her non-answer, prim and proper. Good God almighty. But so uh, it's a shit show. It's a fucking shit show. Okay, so you just rolled out your sad prognostication, but there were no consequences for him. For the governors? The governors went to prison? No, for Trump. Not yet. We talking about yeah, but in your thing of he resigns. Oh no! Again, in that case, he'll die before it's concluded in the courts that Pence couldn't pardon him for everything. But he won't. He won't be. He'd be dead. But it might take years. Boy, I'm just fantasizing about that headline. So, yeah, it's uh, man. And no. during the time that he's waiting for it to go through the courts. He's going to make as six hundred million a year, blah blah blah. Trump Network, blah blah blah. Yeah. Monthly subscription, thirty nine ninety nine. Thirty thirty two percent of the voting public, with their MAGA hats and their fucking QAnon fucking insanity, will subscribe and make the man as rich as he would like to be. Which is almost enough in one year to pay off all of his loans. No. Six hundred right. million. Okay. Okay. Just because he has money to pay off his loans. Doesn't mean he will. Why would he? He never has before. <laughs> Why would I pay off loans? What are what the fuck are loans? Well, yeah, yeah, right, but, right, yeah, right. So, so when is this? I thought this uh, documentary of uh, Trump screwing over the folks in Scotland with his golf course. Did you bring it up to me that it was coming out before the election? Do you know about this? It's a documentary that they the courts Trump sued them and kept it off the out of the out of the off the uh, air, and they finally won their legal case, and it was going to be aired before the election. You don't know about this, obviously. Fascinating, because he, including a woman who lived in a place that she needed to use uh, a well to get her water, and he got into a conflict with her and ended up, of course, winning the day and building his Scottish golf course, which is famous, at least, for Pence deciding somewhere on the way to Europe that he'd take a little detour, seven hours, and his fucking... Air Force Two or whatever the fuck it's called, eat up about three and a half million dollars of taxpayers' dollars and land and stay at that location. Maybe I farted. It smells like cooking food. <laughs> Wait a minute. Look at that. You're going to have to edit a second. I, I got to see what she's talking about. Or there is something fucking burning. Is it my computer? No? Uh, da, 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 oh, I know what it is. Da, ah! It's the lamp I use. It's got an inverted globe, and so the uh, bugs get in it, and it gets super hot. And when it gets super hot, it crisps those bugs. Fuck. <laughs> we were in Japan. We could eat it. You probably need to uh, put my mic. Okay. All right. That's big bugs. Woo! That was a close call. Well. These are, what are these bugs? They're big. Climbing through your windows and shit. You know, they're fried now. In my job, we call that debugging the situation. I just shut the light off. Simple fix. That's there you go. I'm in a darkened room. Oh no. Better. So we have new episodes already of I haven't seen the third day. I haven't seen the the circus. 
I have seen it. I saw episode four of the third day, which is which we both have confusing th- thing to say. I saw half of the fifth, a- oh. and penultimate. Interesting Why is it the, twist. Is there, are there only five? No. Oh, okay. What do you mean? Why is the pen, penultimate? It's the fifth one, which is the penultimate, which means that there's C. I see. The trick is in the pen. <laughs> Mightier than the right. sword. Right. <laughs> which we all know, the pen is mightier than the sword. Tell the guy who's bleeding in the floor of the you know battlefield that. The, the pen is mightier than the trump. Yeah. Yeah. The so. It's mightier than, wait a minute, could be a Gerald Ford illusion. According to the the idea of not only freeing the president of all federal criminal activity, but giving him the benefit of all state criminal activity as well. And that makes the Pence more powerful than the Ford. Whoa. And you know what they call Mike Pence and his wife in England? No. Tuppence. What? Tuppence? Tuppence? Tuppence. Means two, two pence. Ah. Is that true or are you being clever? No, I mean, that's what a tuppence means. Oh, wait a minute. I can tell from the look on your face that it must be category number one because there's nothing clever about your look. I think you might be a little tired. You seem a bit... Di- wait, back back a bit in the day, weird. they used to have... And to be honest, in Europe, we still have... <laughs> A one a one cent coin and a two cent coin, and a two cent coin was in England is called a tuppence. That's facts. Bring the, I'm bring, here I am bringing the facts. Coming what down from the score, what from the heaven. Story. One out of five. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What? Two out of a hundred. What? <laughs> oh mercy, Lord. Remember last. Episode. I mentioned the secret present that I had in store for my wife: painting. Oh, what? Uh, oh, yes, the painting of going for the walk in yes. the woods, where you, where you, you quote uh, poetry together. It's just yes. oh, so romantic. It's very, oh, it's oh, very oh, and, and meaningful. Yes, we. So I presented that painting to her. She more or less, as I said before, she knew that it, it was a painting of that general spot, but she didn't right. know that I had had it recommissioned, basically. And she was like, "Oh, this is nice. Thanks." Like, oh, great. You know, you're welcome. Huh. That it's, it's, it sounds underwhelming. You know, how... So now, if the past is anything to go by, we have nine to 14 months of figuring out where we're going to drill a hole in the wall to actually hang it. So yes. we'll see. What are your uh, walls made out of that you are going to use a drill? Our walls are made... Good question. They... Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Unlike... You over there in wood housed land. Here. I'm in a cement house, actually. Yes. But go ahead. But it's the exception rather than the rule. So here they yeah. build houses out of rebar and cement, are built, are, they have columns built. And then yeah. within that, you the, it's bricks and then some drywall over the bricks. So. Or is it plaster? Yeah, maybe drywall plaster. is big boards, plaster is. Plaster. Slapped on. Yes, plaster slapped on. Yes, this is slapped on. So what you end up doing is the first little bit is easy to drill, and then you get down to the brick, and then you get on and out. You know what? You've told me this before. We, this has I'm come sure, up I'm sure we have. Before. And, this, you know, and then we I have remember, to put in— I think I had some tips for you. I need all the tips I can get. Wait. Yeah, I'll bet, I'll, I'll bet, I'll Wait. bet you do. <laughs> These are drill tips. That's so, the tips you're after. To, to practice, I need to run some drills. And it's... So here's a uh, trick. Here's okay, trick. hold on, hold on. I have, a, I have a pet peeve I want to air. For someone like me who drills a hole three times a year, it seems ridiculous that I should buy and own and, and maintain a drill. There should be a local co-op or part of my apartment building where we all pay a little bit and then there is a drill available to us. I don't want to. It's this concept. Like, so why don't you do that? Why don't you organize that? I don't want to. I don't want to, because maybe because you don't have any tools. <laughs> I need a tool cart. You're, 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 people would say you make a great leader for this effort. 
what tools are you bringing? No, I don't have any tools. That's why I want to do this. Right. Your neighbor says, why don't you just borrow it? And you say, hey, can I borrow your drill? And your neighbor says, fuck no, you'll break it. You don't have any tools. You don't even know how to use them. No. Exactly. So what I'm saying is there should be little clubs where you join and you pay don't you every, have every month. stores there that you can rent a power equipment for? I rent power equipment by the hour. And it, I can get by that, for 19, 20 bucks. That I know of, no. But there are three within a 10 minute drive of here that right. I can get. You imagine the tool, and I'll give you a chance to, to try this. We'll see if you can stump the uh, rental uh, places. But you think of the tool, and these guys will rent it. If you can think of it, then they will uh, have it there. Wow. Go. All right. So what are the first three tools this you don't is, think? This that is the follow up. This is the follow up to the tool of, of the day. This is, that's right. <laughs> this is the, that's right. No, stump stump called, the tool, tool man. Of the day, part two. It's just a sequel. Stump the tool man. It's a sequel. It's a sequel. Maybe a new, fresh name coming. All right. No, so, so you imagine a tool and go. What you can imagine it by its function or by a problem you have. So, you want to have a tool to fix a particular problem. Go ahead. The issue is that I don't have a lot of problems. <laughs> you don't have a lot of problems. I don't well, have a lot of problems that a tool can fix. To, so, so to speak. Right. <laughs> The metaphors are just exploding. Really, all I ever need to do occasionally is drill a hole to hang a thing once I go through the appropriate seven months of paperwork with the wife. So why don't you just borrow the wife. from your neighbor up the hall who's got one? Yes, what? That's what I do. We, we had do? a drill. We had a drill, but it broke. And now I just borrow from you the neighbor. So if that gets around, you're, this is what I mean. This is exactly what I predicted. This is, no, we're not going to loan you tools. You take them, you borrow them, you break them. You lose them. You forget you have them. We never see them again. No, no, this we is, won't do that. This isn't this isn't a ski resort where you get to rent equipment and and then bring it back at the end of the day. You're no. I'm not renting. Like I'm I'm borrowing. This is what economists and this is the official like, economist term call the freeloader problem. The freeloader problem is if you give if you allow services to people, there will be lazy fucks that just take the services and and don't pay back into the system. And right. in relation to drills, I have my own drill bits. Don't don't fuck with me on drill bits. I have, have drill bits because I used to own drills, but my drill broke. I so, bought two new drill bits yesterday. They are drill bits for heavy metal. And what they show on the picture to communicate what they mean by heavy metal, it is nothing other than a giant building I-beam that is probably 12, 14 inches tall and probably eight to uh, eight, 10 inches wide. And it is saying that if you need to drill a hole in that, this will do it. Yeah, baby. I'll tell you what, I popped through my metal roof today, like hot knife through butter. <laughs> hey, so you sent me this dialect thing that said that you were surprised that you had such a Southern, uh, accurately a Southern leaning to your intonations and your accent, but you what? didn't send me mine. You didn't send me mine. And you, you got to take, you got to take the test, boy. Oh, I thought that you just, there's a test. One of our recordings. No, 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 no. It's most of it. It's not about pronunciation. It's about what do you call the insects that come out in the summer that, that light up their bottoms. Fireflies. Okay, there you go. So, fireflies was one thing, there were lightning bugs was another, and there were a whole bunch of other weird, crazy shit that other people call them. I don't know. Uh, torch bugs. I need a torch bugs coming off the water. Lion torches, pretty. yeah. So, a lot of it was about that, where it's just the... You can understand how other people call them, call that particular thing by a name, but it's what occurs to you to call them that yeah i guess now i have to include this in the show notes hey hey do you know what episode hey. this is 76 snowman bro 88 zero eight zero i couldn't, I couldn't imagine the, the number i was stuck if it wasn't 88 what else could it it's be? an eight I was between it's 80. a snowman between two other snowballs 80 <laughs> So I saw a I saw a little rating from our data the other day. I'm not quite sure what all that data means, uh -oh. but it says that 
I've stopped looking currently at that. on some list at 780, okay? Nice. 780 out of I don't know how many. And it when I clicked on it, it said that the best was 237. <laughs> so what? it's a testament. Yes. It's a testament of how much this has become less interesting and not more so. I'm, I'm, the data is clear on this. I, 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 don't, I don't enjoy it any less because of that. But I'm telling you that the voters have spoken. And for some reason, we dropped down from 237 on this particular list to 780. So oh, those listeners. I, I don't know. I don't know what's that's, happened. That's bullshit. Hey, look, anyone hearing this, patreon.com slash happy hour. Dennis, not even to pay Dennis, just to afford this domain name. We need we need some sweet, sweet money. So go to your bank, get a loan. You don't need to pay back a loan. Shit. Loans are loans are for sweet, chumps. Sweet, sweet baby. So go get your loan, get your shit together, and give it to patreon.com slash happy hour. And we're uh, sweet, sweet green baby. Maybe Dennis will stop singing if you pay enough. I don't know. Sweet, sweet baby. Are we going to go higher? How long must I dream? Uh, uh. My baby. I, you know what? Hey, hey. This, hey. I learned a thing today. Oh. Which is weird because normally I'm dense as fuck. But so I learned that I will give my fact in the form of a question. Who was the president that earned the least amount of the popular vote, but won the Electoral College? George Bush. Before you were born? George Washington. Say, it's one of the more popular presidents. Abraham Lincoln. Oh. Apparently, when they had the election where Abraham Lincoln won... Already, the country was super fucking divided about slavery, and that the the people were divided between we sh- we want a candidate that opposes all slavery, or we want a candidate that will allow slavery in all the states plus all the new states that are coming when we expand west, or we want a candidate that will ex- that will allow slavery where it is right now, but oppose it where it where it will be in the future where not allow it in the new territories. And apparently the country was really firmly divided on that. And it's so basically it was like a three party system, which is a cheat in that question, because if we had a three party system or a actual parliamentary thing where anything would be better than what we have. But it turns out that he was super unpopular. And as he was doing his final touring and his trip to Washington after winning the election, there was so much threat to his life as he was riding in the in the trains to get to Washington that it was pretty questionable that he would arrive at all. But wow, and uh, and which is so you know what accurate for 2020. And you know what? What do we do? He was a Republican. He was a Republican. Nobody knew that. Nobody knows that. No. Nobody knows that. Nobody knows that. Who would know that? Nobody. People are asking. People are saying. I mean, people are asking. But yeah. All over. So that's that's where we at. It oh beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain. Oh man. Oh, America. <laughs> Are you singing it in Spanish? <laughs> España. Hey. España. I gotta go, bro. Yo, thank God for Space and Skies. Okay, that does it for episode 80. That's 080. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 080. I hope you learned something about the finance system and about tools and building sheds and things. You can go support us at patreon.com slash happy hour. We would love that.
can buy buy me a drill and buy Dennis some more pieces of concrete or something. See you next week.